Let's start. So um, before the break, we have I will show you the uh, R coding, how to do the FPCA uh, functional principal component analysis uh, for the for the data analysis. Okay. So um, today um, I will. Um, so 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 now I'm talking about uh, uh, how to. So for the temperature data, we 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 notice that uh, the obtain the functional principal component is not smooth, right? So, so uh, in some cases, maybe it will give us troubles, especially when you want to try to interpret the LPCs. Uh, so, you, so generally, I find a smooth LPC will give me a, a easier interpretation, and also, uh, I guess, uh, uh, in terms of the prediction, it will be more stable, okay? So therefore, uh, today uh, we will learn the, uh, how to uh, control the smoothness of functional uh, principal component, and also we will learn the uh, suppose uh, we also mentioned the, uh, in the beginning when we learn FPCA is that uh, for FPCA, although it's a it's a version a functional version of PCA, but a PCA work on multiple variable, but for FPCA. We actually only work on one variable, right? We will only work on the temperature, for example, temperature functions. Okay. So today, uh, we will learn the uh, version really multivariate, uh, in our multivariate sense. So, so we will work on the suppose here we have uh, like uh, uh, two variables. Okay. So how can we two functional variables? How can we do the LPCA on these two um, variables together? Okay, so uh, before we go into the details, uh, firstly, I want to um, show you um, we can put a PCA in a general uh, perspective, okay, in the functional, how many of you have learned the functional analysis? Can I raise your hand? Functional analysis. Not a functional data analysis, functional analysis. Okay. Not that many. Okay. Yes. So actually, um, function functional analysis is 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 uh, like they have a lot of tools how to um, how to look at the functions or vectors in a more general way. Okay. So um, basically, um, so both these uh, vectors or the functions they belong to a space, right? So so, um, so when we define the space, we need to define the norm of the space, and uh, to define the norm of the space, we need to define the distance. Okay. So you will find out like uh, for different uh, for vectors or functions, if you define the distance function, um, then you basically you will define this space. Okay. So therefore, in the following, you will find out that uh, if we define the space in a general way, then the, all the calculations will be the same for either vectors or functions. Okay. So basically, here, um, suppose uh, we have uh, uh, multiple observations, x1 to xn. So these observations can be vectors or can be functions. Okay. So here we want to find the principal component for these vectors or functions in the in the same manner. Okay. So what can we do? Okay. So firstly, um, like uh, we know that. Um, so when we estimate the first LPC, C one. The idea is that uh, um, when we project x i to c one, we want to, it can explain the most variations. In other words, we want to find uh, the c one such that the projected uh, x i projected to c one it has the minim minimum residues. So in other words, we want to minimize the summation of the residues. Uh, when the residues of x i projected to c one, so the residues here is x i minus x i c c one inner product times c one. So here, uh, this inner product, 
uh, using these two um, uh, arrows uh, represent the, uh, the the projection of cosy one to uh, the xi on the cosy one. Okay, so um, so this is how we put this uh, uh, first LPC uh, in a general form for vectors or functions, and uh, so here. Uh, when we work on the second LPC cos two, we want the cos two to be orthogonal to cos one. Therefore, we will define the inner product of cos one and cos two equal to zero. Right? They are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So, uh, so here, uh, if we, if we, if x one and y. Um, their inner product equal to zero means x and y are orthogonal, right? Um, so here is the definition for the inner products. Okay, how many of you have heard about the inner product before? Okay, most of you. Okay, so basically, inner product is a symmetric bi bilinear operator on a space. Okay, I don't have to be vector space; can be any space. Okay, so um, so it had to um, satisfy the three properties. Firstly, uh, the inner product x y will be equal to the inner product y and x, and also uh, the inner product a x times two y will be equal to the a times the inner product x and y, and uh, the inner product of x plus y and z will be equal to the inner product of x to z plus y to z, right? So this is the uh, three requirements for the inner products. So if, if the uh, product, if an operator, if a symmetric bilinear operator satisfies these three constraints, then we can call it as inner product, okay? So you can see the inner product can be very general. So here, just give you some examples. Uh, for the vector uh, Euclidean space, uh, the inner product will be just the inner product of uh, two vector x and y. And uh, for the L2 uh, space, functional space, the inner product of two functions x and y will be the integral of xt, yt, dt. Okay? And uh, so after we define the uh, inner product, we can also define the distance now. So the distance of uh, uh, element x to y, or we call a norm of x minus y, will be equal to the inner product of x minus y to x minus y, okay? Uh, so this should be a square root, I guess, okay? Uh, square root of this inner product, okay? So this is the how we define the distance between x and y, okay? So now we, if we define the inner product, we also define the distance. Any questions so far? Yeah. Yes. So what if uh, the, for the, the functional case, what if x and y are um, as number dimensions? Do we do the equation component wise? Okay, this is a very good question. Uh, so if we have well, x and y are both multivariate functions, right? So what can we do? Uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so basically, if you have multivariate functions, for example, xt equal to x1t, x2t, then you can define the, the inner product as uh, uh, the inner product of the first uh, function, x1, y1, and then the inner product of plus the inner product of x2 to y2. Okay, you can do this way, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this is... Uh, this is uh, when you have multivariate uh, functions, okay? And uh, uh, okay, so uh, so now uh, we want to find out uh, uh, find out a direction y, right? So the projection of x to y will have the minimum residues. So in that case, suppose the direction y will be the principal component that we are looking for, 
will be equal to we try to minimize uh, this uh, distance x to a y. Okay, so y will be the uh, PC principal components. A will be the PC scores, right? So we try to minimize this. So then we solve this minimization problem. Will be this uh, PC scores will be just equal to the inner product of x and y over the inner product of y and y. Okay. Um, so here, suppose we have the constraints that the length of the y equal to 1. In other words, the inner product of y and y equal to 1. Then uh, the PC score A will just be the inner product of x and y. Right? OK? And uh, so if we have the constraints that y and z are orthogonal, means the inner product of y and z equal to 0. And uh, if we want to minimize this uh, sum squared of this uh, x minus a y minus b z. So here, y and z you can interpret it as uh, the first LPC and the second LPC respectively. And a and b will be the first LPC score and the second LPC score respectively. Then you can find out that uh, actually, uh, if we, you, you constraints y and z also the length equal to 1, then you will find out that uh, the PC score, first LPC score A, will be equal to the inner product of X and Y, and the second LPC score B will be equal to the inner product of X and Z. Okay? So this is the uh, inner product. Okay? Um, so, uh, so for example, um, like uh, for the regular principal component analysis, suppose we have uh, n vectors x1 to xn, right? So suppose we want to find a uh, C, C will be the principal component, and we want to maximize the variance of the PC scores. So the PC score will be just the projection of xi on the C, so the projection will be the inner product of C and uh, xi, right? So then you try to maximize the variance of these uh, PC scores, okay? And uh, uh, yeah, mm. okay. So this is for the PCA. Uh, and we just mentioned that uh, if we have multivariate functions, uh, you can define uh, this uh, uh, inner product in this way. Okay. Um, so in other words, uh, this is equivalent as uh, uh, suppose uh, you have uh, two variables, xi of t and yi of t. Basically, you will put these two variables uh, end to end. And then you will make it as a one function, z of t. So z of t will be just a combined x t and y t, x and y t connected together as one big function, right? And and then you can try to find the uh, FPC scores, uh, cosy x of t and cosy y y of t. And here you want to um, so the FPC scores or the inner product will be the inner integral of cosy x t times x i of t plus the integral of uh, cosy y of t times y i of t dt, right? Okay, so this is just the inner product of x i of t y i of t with and x cosy x t and cosy y t, okay? So this is how we define this, right? Okay, yeah. So, so now you can see that uh, uh, with this uh, new definition of inner product, we are able to extend our uh, calculations on the functional PCA to the um, multivariate functions. Okay. Any questions? So it's like um, for x and y, xi and yi, 
to make no matter what are the domains for each function, so we can de define z. Yes. So yeah. So basically, we just connect the two functions together. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you have x, i, or t, right? Mm -hmm. And you have y, i, or t, they may not be disconnected. They may be disconnected, right? So you just put them together. So in the domain of their own domains. Yeah. OK? So you treat this as one function. The whole thing is as one function. And, and this may be discontinuous here. It's fine. Yes. So if they have the same domain, x and y? Yes. So, the, so we can still do this transformation? Yes, yes. Either a same domain or different domain is either way is okay. okay. Yes. So yeah. It's just like we transform one function so that these two functions are connected. That's right. Basically, you treat it as one function. Okay. Don't have to be connected. Just uh, put them together. Okay. Yes, as the one long function. Yes. Do you think it might have to be like independent or something like that? Uh, so, this is a very good question. So here, you can see here, actually we didn't consider the correlation between these two uh, variables. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is a kind of a drawback of this method, yes. So there's uh, some other versions of multivariate of FPCA we didn't cover here, yes. Sorry, I just want to clarify her question. Yeah. Um, when she said, say the name, like, does that mean you shift one of the functions over to a different domain and then connect them? Or do you just lie on top? Uh, not aligned to the top, it's just you shift the domain. Shift. Yeah, so like for example, for this case here, if xt the domain is from 0 to t, yeah. and, and then the domain of yt is 0 to t as well, yeah. you will shift the, y, the domain to yt to be from t to 2t. Okay. Yes. You can imagine if you're giving you two different domains, it's still fine. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, you kind of will put them together. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, and one long function, z of t. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so this is uh, uh, this is one way to do an LPCA for multivariate functions. So here, this is to show you uh, one examples uh, for the multivariate functional data. So suppose here, uh, this is the gate data. Basically, this is a uh, um, like a, a working cycle of uh, uh, of 39, 39 children, okay? So when, when we walk, uh, there will be, basically there's the two part is, is moving, is our hip and our knees, right? Yes, yeah. So, so, so uh, and this is a kind of a, a periodic process, right? Yeah, so, so here, this is one um, uh, uh, kineology lab. They doing this measurement want to study the, uh, the 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 walking process, okay? And and uh, so this is a kind of will show um, so the angles of the hip and the knees. I don't remember uh, how they define these angles. Yeah, okay. So basically, this they, they measure the the angles, the change of the angles um, when we the, in these gait cycles, and also the angles of our knee. Uh, in these uh, gate cycles, okay. So, uh, so the domain here will be from zero to one. Basically, is the proportion uh, in this uh, in this uh, walking cycle, okay. Um, so, if you plot uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, so here this is the hip and knees separately, right? So, if you just plot the the the, the angles of the hip. And, and the angles of knee together, okay? Like the here, this graph is to show the, the x-axis is the angle of the hip, the y-axis is the angle of the knee, and you can see, like, uh, uh, so all each uh, uh, child, the gate cycle will be just a, a loop, a loop like, uh, like this, okay? A loop like this, right? Just a loop, okay? And you can see here, like uh, some 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 child has a like kind of a smaller loop, and smaller circle, and some child has a big circles that represent like uh, how 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 they are like um, big I guess they are walking 
looks like, right? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, this is uh, the interesting graph. Um, yeah. Uh, so so this is a kind of a very interesting graph in functional data. Like if you have a multivariate uh, functional data, uh, instead of plot, we generally we will plot the variables against the time, right? But uh, in some cases, if you plot the one variable against the other variable at the same time, you will see some interesting patterns. Okay, so this is, uh, I guess this is called a uh, phase plot uh, in, in functional data analysis. Okay. Okay, so we can also look at the correlation of this uh, gate, date, gate curves. Okay, so basically here, uh, this uh, uh, three graph uh, show the correlation of this uh, of this uh, uh, gate curves. Um, so here on the, the the left one, it will show the correlation of the the heap versus the heap. Okay, in terms of the the in the uh, working cycle. Okay, and uh, so what did we see? Uh, so we didn't see much things, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the interesting thing is to see the, uh, the, the, the middle graph is the correlation of the knee versus the hip, okay? Maybe I made a mistake. I think this why these three graphs are lo all looks the same. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly the same, right? Okay, I think I just uh, made a mistake. Okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I see the reason, okay? So I, I will... I will Change this graph later on, okay. Okay, so let's let's move on. Uh, so here um, we have this uh, uh, bivariate functional data, right? So you can also uh, this uh, uh, this graph to show the mean curve, okay, the mean of the height curve and the mean of the knee curve, okay, and uh, the the right graph to show the phase plot in terms of the mean curve. Okay, so this is basically can understand this as a mean uh, working cycle. Okay, yes. Okay, so and then we can do the um, PCA, FPCA on this gate data, and uh, uh, so we can find the uh, find the uh, principal components on this uh, uh, for this. Uh, 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 bivariate uh, functional data. Okay, so the left side is to show the functional principal components corresponding to the heat curves, and the right panel is to show the first four functional principal components for the knee uh, uh, curves. Okay, and uh, so yeah. And you can also uh, plot this uh, uh, principal component uh, like uh, uh, the graph we showed uh, before. This graph is to show the uh, basically the middle one is the mean of the uh, the the knee curve or the hip curve, and the 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 interval will be plus or minus two times square root of ti times uh, the FPC. Okay. And uh, you can even plot the, the corresponding to the, the phase plot for the uh, for the uh, PCA. Um, so um, even like uh, in the real application, you may have mixed uh, observations. For example, you may have two variables. One variable is the function x i x y of t, and the other variables may be uh, are some scalar, right, a vector x2, right? So if you define this inner product uh, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, mixed uh, observations in this way, right, if you have uh, two observations, x1, t, x2, and y1, t, y2, you can define this inner product as the integral of x1, t times y1, t plus x2 transpose times y2. Right. Okay, and uh, so 
So this is uh, this is the um, when you have mixed of the vision, you can still define the uh, inner product in this way, and then you can do the RPCA in a similar mm -hmm. manner. Okay, and uh, so uh, so you can do it further. Uh, so you can put the weight on different variables, right? So for example, you can give different weights like a C uh, to the uh, x2 X uh, variables, right? And uh, so how do we define the weight? Uh, so for example, uh, you can define this weight C as the length of the interval uh, or the length divided by dimension of vectors. Um, means uh, uh, the function has the same impact as the total uh, vector and all you can do is the uh, find define C as the uh, approximate correlation between x i t and y i. Okay. Okay. So we will learn this uh, later. Uh, so this is how we uh, define the uh, using the inner product to doing the FPCA on multivariate uh, functional data or the mixed data, right? When we have functions or vectors. So you can see here, uh, we can just define the inner product in some, in some way. And then based on this inner product, we are able to do the PCA directly, right? Okay. So this is for the multivariate FPCA. So now um, let's look at uh, how we can control the smoothness of the functional principal components. Okay, so as we as I said, uh, if we can control the uh, functional principal components, uh, we can have a better interpretation on the functional principal components and also we can have a more robust estimation on the functional principal components and we can have a better prediction, okay? So how can we do? Uh, so basically, the, the idea is very similar. So basically, you will define a new inner product. Suppose here, you just have one function x of t, right? So basically, you, you, because you care, also care about the smoothness of the functional principal components. Therefore, you basically you will define the, another function, which is the differential <coughs> operator of the function. So here, L is a differential operator. So for example, in most common cases, we will look at the second derivative of x of t, right? Okay, so, um, so then uh, you can look at the uh, the inner product of uh, of two of the weights x and y equal to the integral of x t y t plus the in lambda times the integral of l x t times l y of t. Right? Okay. So this is the uh, inner product. Okay. Um. So, uh, so after we define this inner product, actually we will define a new norm, okay? Uh, this norm has a special name called a uh, uh, Suborlov uh, norm, okay? So basically, the norm of any function, C of t, will be square of the norm, will be equal to the integral of cos t square plus lambda plus the integral of the uh, linear differential operator L times cos t square. Okay. So in now in this case, uh, we will try to um, the suppose cos is the LPC and then the integral of cos t times x i of t will be the FPC scores, right? So we want, we want to try to maximize the variance of these FPC scores, okay? At the same time, 
we want to uh, control uh, the the uh, smoothness of cos of t. So therefore, we adding this uh, uh, this roughness penalty term in the denominator. Okay. So for example, if you think about if cos t is uh, more rough, then this uh, uh, integral of this uh, uh, differential operator on cos t will become larger, right? If it become larger, then this variance divided by this larger integral will become smaller, right? Yeah, so in other words, when we try to maximize these uh, ratios, we not only try to maximize the variance, we also try to minimize the denominator, we try to minimize the integral uh, with the L cos t uh, square, right? So this is how you control the the roughness on the cos of t, okay? So this is very similar as the smoothness blinds. For the smoothness blinds, we add the roughness penalty as one additional addition term, right? We add this roughness penalty term. And so here, so for FPC, uh, we put uh, this uh, roughness penalty term as in the denominator, okay? It's a similar way, okay? We try to minimize the roughness penalty term. The reason is because uh, later on we will show that uh, if we do this way, we can write down this as a quadratic form, okay? And then we can impress this question as the eigen-decomposition problems, okay? But if you put the penalty as a, a additional term, then it's hard to write down as a, a quadratic form. It's hard to solve this problem, okay? That's the reason we put the roughly the penalty term in the denominator, okay? Okay, so uh, this lambda is uh, again is a smoothing parameter. So when lambda increases, um, we want to make uh, this cos t uh, become smoother, and uh, therefore uh, the this uh, uh, l cos t will become smaller. Okay, and uh, also. Um, And also, um, when we define the, uh, we want the LPC to be orthogonal to each other, right? So um, when we define the orthogonal, we can also based on this, uh, uh, this inner product. So for two uh, FPCs, the IS LPC cos I of T and the JS LPC cos J of T, if they are not orthogonal to each other, we basically we means uh, this uh, two integral summation together equal to zero, right? In other words, uh, you can see here, basically, if uh, in this uh, definition of the inner product, uh, when cos i of t is orthogonal to cos j of t, it doesn't mean the real orthogonal, right? It means uh, under this inner product, they are orthogonal, okay? So we have this actual, um, uh, Differential operator term there. Okay. Yes. How the second part of this question equals zero? Like, uh, when they have the differential operator, how their inner product should be zero? How they can be equal to zero? Uh, this is a good question. Uh, I guess uh, it is fine. So, like, uh, basically, uh, if you think about this, uh, so this it looks complicated, but this is a still a linear differential operator. Yeah. So if you write a cos i of t or cos j of t as a linear combination of basic functions, you can still write down this uh, two this complicated inner product this two term together as one quadratic form. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so this is uh, this is for this uh, uh, a smooth uh, smoothing penalty, okay, roughly the penalty. So here, um, let me show you one examples. So the left panel is to show the um, point-wise average temperature 
um, for 35 Canadian cities. And the right panel is to show you the estimated LPC, four LPCs, without any roughing penalty. You can see it, it's very, very vaguely here, right? It's, um, it not, look, not only doesn't look so nice, it's also um, hard to interpret when you have these uh, small variations, okay? So then you can add this uh, uh, roughness penalty. And uh, so how do we choose in the roughness penalty? Basically, we choose the roughness panel, the roughness smoothing parameter lambda by minimizing the cross validation. Okay, so here for our case, uh, um, uh, we will try to leave one curve out. Okay, so for example, suppose we uh, for fixed number of principal components, we can first leave one curve out, one curve x i out. And then we're doing the LPCA, and we will find these uh, principal components, right? And then we can um, find the reconstruct XI based on these principal components. Basically, it's a linear regression, right? And then we can find this uh, uh, integral of square of the residuals, and the cross validation will just be the summation of these residuals, right? Okay, so. This is commonly used uh, um, criterion when we're choosing the tuning parameters. So this is also called uh, leave one curve out cross validation. So every time we will leave one curve out. Okay. So this is uh, the left part, left panel here. It will show you the how the cross validation change with the uh, with the uh, log lambda. So here log is a natural logarithm. Okay. So you can see here the core validation is minimized when log lambda equal to two. Basically lambda equal to uh, seven point uh, uh, three nine. Okay. So um so this is the estimated LPC when we choose the lambda equal to seven point uh, uh, three nine and uh, so you can see it's still not that uh, smooth enough, right? So that's a problem for cross additions. It's, it's uh, generally we are doing this uh, uh, like less smooth than, than it should be, okay? So uh, you can, for this case, you can increase lambda if you like, okay? Okay, so uh, this is, uh, this is uh, um, how can we control the the smoothness of the LPCs, okay? So um, as I mentioned in the beginning of LPCA, the main um, advantage for the dual LPCA is that we can do in the dimension reduction, right? We can project our infinite dimension functions to a finite uh, dimension space, okay? From function to the LPC scores, right? So there's another big advantage when we do the LPCA is that uh, we can do some prediction, okay? And uh, so, um, for example, suppose uh, for one curve x of t, we only observe the x of t in some, uh, at a certain, up to a certain time, right? Or we only observe the x of t uh, at a few time points, very sparse. Okay, so or, or if x of t is a multi-varied, um, we only observe the one function variables. How can we predict the other variables? Okay, so using this LPCA, actually it's very easy to, to, to do this. So here, this is give you one example. So for the temperature curves, so we have the temperature curve for 35 uh, um, cities, right? So here, I remove the uh, the Montreal temperature, and I using the rest of 34 cities temperature curve to doing the LPC. After we doing the find the LPCs, um, suppose I only observed uh, uh, this uh, this blue this uh, this blue circles 
means I only observed the temperature of Montreal in the first 150 days. Okay, so then based on this, I can calculate the FPC scores for the Montreal curve. And then I can get this curve, this blue curve. Okay, so from this blue curve, I can predict the temperature of Montreal uh, in the after 150 days, right? And so this blue curve is the prediction, and uh, so the red circle here is the true temperature, which I suppose I don't know, okay? So you can see here the prediction actually is very close to the observed temperature, okay? So, so this is kind of show you a very uh, appealing features for functional principal components. So you are able to predict, so um, like a, a big uh, part of the curves, even you don't observe. Okay. What is the dashed line? The dashed line here is the mean curve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you can imagine, for the time series analysis, you can never do such a good prediction, right? You can only predict like very short term, right? Yes. Do you know why we can do the prediction so well for such long term prediction? Do you know the reason? We have the current structure. Yes, we have the current structure. Basically, um, so here, when we do the LPCAs, we actually, the principal components, they try to capture the major trend in the other curves, right? So because here, um, all these temperature curves share a very similar trend, had a very similar variations. Therefore, when we are just using the four LPCs, we are able to capture the major variations in, for any temperature, right? So therefore, um, so we can borrow the information uh, from other temperature curves. We are able to predict uh, the Montreal temperature so well in a long term. Okay, so that's kind of a uh, uh, power of uh, the LPCA. Okay, and uh, so this is another examples. So here, uh, suppose. I have for one subject, I only know their knee data. I only have these knee circles, okay? So when I have this, uh, when I have these knee angles, I can predict, I can compute the FPC scores, right? So after I get the FPC scores, I can predict the heat angles. So you can see here, uh, if we have the knee uh, angle curves, we are, we are able to predict the heat angle, hip angle curves very well. So the circle here represents the true hip angles. So it, it's, uh, you can see here, uh, we are able to do this uh, very well. Again, the dashed line here represents the mean uh, of the hip angle curve and the mean knee angle curves, okay? So um, the reason is that uh, when we do this multivariate LPCA, we actually capture the um, capture the um, not sure. Do we capture the correlation of these two variables? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So this is uh, this is how the prediction looks like. Um, so here the summary of what we learned. So basically, um, I show you a general way uh, to define the LPCA, to define PCA based on the inner product, right? You learn that uh, for different version of inner product, you are able to define the norm, you are able to define the distance, and then you are able to define the new PCA method, right? We can do the PCA on the functions, or the vectors, or the multi multiple functions, or the mixed of functions and vectors, right?
right? And uh, so, and also you even can introduce the smoothness, right? So you can inter uh, we introduce the like uh, the treat the derivative of the curve as a new variable, right? And then we can do the LPCA um, with this smooth controls. And we were using the Liu out cross validation to choose the smoothing parameters. And we can use the functional PCA to uh, reconstruct the partially observed functions. Okay.